Let's now do some analysis of the trolley problem. When surveyed, around 80% of participants say you should pull the switch. Approximately the same number say pushing the large man off the bridge is wrong. The most common justification given by people who say you should pull the switch in version 1 is that it saves the most lives. One person dies, but five live. This is a better set of consequences than five dying and one living. It's just a matter of numbers. However, if this is truly their justification, then why does it not hold for version 2? In version 2, we have the same set of consequences. Either one dies and five live, or five die and one lives. Yet most people do not think pushing the man off the bridge is morally justifiable. As it stands, the two most common responses to these dilemmas reveal an interesting inconsistency. The majority of people, it would seem, are contradicting themselves. This is our challenge. Whatever principle we're using to make our decision in one version of the dilemma, we need to also use this in the other version. So, let's now look at ways of resolving this apparent inconsistency. It might seem clear to some of you that the easiest solution would be to say we should push the large man off the bridge. This would be extending the principle of save the most lives we use in version 1 to version 2. If you said this from the start, then well done on being consistent. You've stuck to the consequentialist principle of save the most lives, and you've applied it consistently in the two examples. However, some will simply find this unconvincing, and even rather unsettling. A criticism of this approach might be that it would seem to allow any action, no matter how awful, to be morally justified. In version 2 of the trolley problem, we are essentially advocating the murder of an innocent person. Surely this can never be moral, can it? Let's explore some more options before deciding what is the best solution. Another option would be to abandon using the always save the most lives principle, and find another principle to use in both dilemmas. So rather than changing our response to version 2 to match our more principles in version 1, let's do the opposite. Let us instead identify a different moral principle in version 2 and apply it back to version 1, so they match that way. Some philosophers argue that what makes pushing the man off the bridge wrong is that we are directly killing him. And directly killing someone is worse than letting someone die, or failing to save them. For example, imagine you see someone throw a young child into a river, and let's also say you're a good swimmer and you could jump in to save them. However, you don't jump in and they die. Did you kill them? Maybe in some way you've done something wrong in failing to help, but surely you're not as blameworthy as the person who threw them in. Directly killing seems to be worse than failing to save, even though they produce the same consequences. In version 2 of the trolley problem, we're directly causing the death of a man on the bridge, and this is what makes it wrong. Despite it being a bad consequence that the five on the track will be killed, we're not responsible for their deaths. We did not put them on the track, we did not put the train in motion. We only failed to save them. This seems a good explanation for why so many people are against pushing the man off the bridge. However, remember, our challenge is that whatever principle we choose, we need to apply consistently to both dilemmas. And in doing so, it now seems most people will have to change their response to version 1. In version 1, by doing nothing, we fail to save 5 lives. But by pulling the switch, we directly cause the death of one person. If directly killing is worse than letting die, then we cannot pull the switch just as we cannot push the man. Maybe you're one of the people who said both were wrong in the first place. If so, well done on being consistent. However, not everyone will like this option either. A criticism of this approach might be that it makes morality about keeping ourselves some way morally blameless at the expense of how our action, in this case inaction, impacts others. Imagine if we added more people to the dilemma, so it was a choice between pulling a switch to directly kill one, or letting 500 other people die. At what point does it seem just unreasonable to continue ignoring the consequences of our inaction? So far, we've considered two different principles that, when applied, resolve the inconsistency we saw at the start. However, both approaches require most people to change their view on one of the dilemmas. Now, it could be that this is just what's needed, 
and that these two dilemmas show that people believe contradictory things. Or perhaps there is another principle we could consider that explains why in version 1 the deliberate killing of one person to save five is good, or at least permissible, but in version 2 the deliberate killing of one person to save five is wrong.